story time about how I caught my baby daddy with my best friend in my own bed. Disclaimers is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. My baby and daddy and I are engaged to be married. Her baby is almost one year old and we've been happy up until now. The bad thing is that we rushed into our relationship. We never really took the time to really get to know each other. I don't know a lot about his childhood and I don't tell him about mine because he doesn't ask. We don't really know what each other's favorite colors are. You know, stuff like that. Then I got pregnant and everything changed. He asked me to marry him and I told him that we needed to be engaged for a while so that we could really get to know each other. At first he agreed, but then he started getting annoyed. He wanted to go out with his friends and be free, but we had a baby. This is where my best friend comes in. I'm a nurse and one of the things that I told my fiance was that I wanted to keep my job even after I had the baby. So my best friend started coming over to our place to take care of the baby. My fiance owns his own business so he doesn't have to be there all the time. So he was basically home all the time with my best friend. And no, it never crossed my mind that they would ever do anything behind my back. Three weeks ago, I started noticing some really weird behavior between them. My best friend had a hickey on her neck and I started asking her who it was from. I just was curious, but my fiance yelled at me and told me to stop asking. Part two is up. Part two of how I caught my baby daddy with my best friend in my own bed. Disclaimers is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. When I asked my best friend about the ginormous hickey she had on her neck, my stupid baby daddy started yelling at me. He told me to leave her alone and to mind my own business. So I said, excuse me, she's my best friend and we talk about everything. That's when my best friend told me that she met someone new and that she was really happy about it. My baby daddy told me that I was nosy and he left the room. And that's when all the alarms went off. He had never behaved that way with me before, much less for my best friend. As soon as he left the room, I started interrogating my best friend and she looked guilty as hell. I asked her who the new guy was and she wouldn't tell me. I mean, couldn't she have come up with a lie? But secretly, I knew that she wanted me to find out. A few days later, I start noticing more weird behavior. My baby daddy asked me to go buy groceries after I got out of work and it was already 10 p.m. He said that we really needed some things for the baby, so I went to the supermarket. It took me about an extra hour to get home after that, which looking back now was plenty of time for him and my best friend to do whatever they wanted. And when I got home, my best friend looked guilty as hell again. She was also wearing her shirt inside out. When I asked her about it, she started stuttering. And once again, my baby daddy jumped into defense. He told me that I was being nosy again. Instead of trying to get information, I decided I was going to catch him in the act. I told my baby daddy I was going to stay at work late. And I told my best friend the same thing. But really, I was a block away from our house. Part three is up. Part three of how I caught my baby daddy and my best friend in my bed. Disclaimers is not my story time. It's sending me on Instagram. Those fools didn't even bother to close the curtains. I waited 10 minutes and then I walked to the front yard. I started looking through the window, but I really couldn't see anything. I went to the side of the house and I started looking through another window and I could see that the door to our bedroom was open, which I knew I had closed before I left. I quietly unlocked the front door and that's when I see my baby on the couch all by himself. Yes, he was wrapped up in blankets and surrounded by pillows, but the fact that they left him by himself is what angered me the most. I quietly walked over to the bedroom and I could see them both laying on the bed. I thought my stomach was gonna fall out of my butt. I walked right into the bedroom, but they were too busy making out to even see that I was in the room. So I threw my purse right at their faces, but I was weirdly calm. The ones who were freaking out were them. My best friend got up from the bed and basically ran out of my house. She didn't even have the courage to face me. And all he did was sit on the bed and beg me for forgiveness. Then he begged me not to tell his mother. It's like all he really cared about was his mom not finding out. That's when he confessed that his mom was helping him out financially and that his business was not doing well and that he really didn't want to upset her because she would stop giving him money. So I grabbed my baby and our things and we went to my parents' house. My parents have a huge house with the pool and everything. I don't need to be with him. My parents offered to take me in and take care of us. Of course, I'm continuing to work, but should I tell my baby daddy's mom? And I still haven't spoken to my best friend or ex-best friend. What the heck should I do? Story time about how I'm a homewrecker and I don't regret it. Disclaimers is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. I've been dating this guy who's married for a year now, but here's some backstory. We went to high school together and I was so in love with him back then. I never had the courage to tell him that I was in love with him in high school, so nothing ever really happened. I went to college and I didn't see him for a few years. But when I saw him again, he was married with a kid. At the time, I did have a boyfriend, so I never thought anything would happen between us. But the opportunity arose and I took it. One day, I saw him at my gym and I decided right then and there that I wanted to be his girlfriend. I started dressing up really sexy to go to the gym. I'd wear sports bras and really tight leggings and I had no shame. I was doing everything I could to get his attention. But like I said, he was married. I would go up to him at the gym and say hello and he would say hi back. He never really had a full conversation with me and I could tell that it was because he was married. So one day I worked up the courage to ask him for help at the gym. I just pretended not to know how to use a machine and he fell for it. We ended up talking for about 15 minutes and that's when I told him that I had always had a crush on him since high school. He got really nervous and I realized that he was attracted to me. So I asked him for his number really casually. He did hesitate for like a second but then he gave it to me. After that we would see each other at the gym almost every single day and of course I would take the opportunity to talk to him and flirt and eventually he started flirting back. 
Remember I said I had a boyfriend? Well, I told him that I had a boyfriend just to get him jealous. And it actually started to work. He asked me questions about my boyfriend and eventually I told him that he was a loser and I was going to break up with him. Part two is up. Story time about how I'm a homewrecker and I don't regret it. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. Repeat, this is not my story time. I'll send him on Instagram. The more I flirted, the more it would work. He started asking me about my boyfriend and I could tell that he was getting jealous. So I told him that my boyfriend was a loser and that I was looking for a way out of the relationship. So after that, every conversation we ever had at the gym was about how I was going to break up with my boyfriend. You see what I was doing? I was getting him so interested in my relationship that all he would think about was me being single. One day, I mustered up the courage to ask him if he wanted to go get a coffee with me after the gym. And he said yes without hesitating. We were at the coffee shop for about an hour, but he never really talked about anything important. I mean, he talked about his kids sometimes. So of course, I started asking about his wife. And finally, he told me that he wasn't happy in his marriage. You see, this is what I was looking for. And after that, I would try to give him advice about his wife. Eventually, I told him that it sounded to me like he needed to get a divorce. One day, I decided to kiss him after the gym. And he did not reject my kiss. We made out in his car in the parking lot for two hours. He told me he would do anything to be with the girl like me. Part three is story time about how I'm a homewrecker and I don't regret it. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. As we were making out in his car, finally, his wife called him. That's when I took his phone and I told him that he needed to give me attention. And just like that, it worked. We started going on dates and everything. Mostly just to the movie theaters during the day when no one was there. So now that I had him, I needed the next step was for him to get an actual divorce. Slowly, I started poisoning him against his wife. Okay, I know I sound super evil, but this was the only way I was going to be able to do it. And I did know that he was unhappy with his wife. Apparently, all she really cared about was the kids and not him at all. Which I guess is understandable, but you don't neglect your husband after you have children, right? For two months straight, every single day, I would tell him that he needed to get a divorce. And I showed him that he would be so much happier with someone like me. I had him wrapped around my pinky. Eventually, he started agreeing with me. This is when things really started to change. Whenever he'd get into a fight with his wife, he would come stay at my apartment. He had never done this before. A week later, he decided to confess to his wife that he was seeing someone else, which was the happiest day of my life. He asked her for a divorce and she had no choice but to say yes. She still begs him to stay with her. Now we live together in an even bigger apartment. His wife hates me and calls me a bitch anytime she sees me, but I won. And yeah, we're already talking about getting married. His kids hate me though. What should I do about that? Go for your dreams. Bye. Hi, my name is Daisy and I live in Vermont. Please like and subscribe. My parents were both astronauts, so they spend most of their time in space. I grew up with my aunt, who was a space research scientist too. She was mostly busy with her work in the lab, and that left me with none other than Sarah, my childhood friend. I met her when I was five. My aunt threw me a huge birthday party, but just as I was about to blow out the candles, another girl jumped in and spoiled my moment. Hey you, why did you do that? But she just looked at me and smirked. I got super angry and smashed her face into my cake and a war broke out. She jumped onto me and grabbed my hair. And that's when Sarah came to my rescue. She was like an angel. She held that mean, witchy girl by her hair and swung her into the swimming pool. You just saved my life. Oh, she deserved it. And she did the same thing to me on my birthday. This was it. I felt like I'd found my soulmate. And that's how we became besties. We played together all day long and even went to school together. And life was pretty much fun until the ninth grade when a new guy, Jeff, transferred into our class. Once, Sarah and I were getting some lunch in the cafeteria when she tripped over something and her food tray fell straight onto Jeff's face and clothes. All the kids in the cafeteria burst out laughing and his face went all red. And then he came charging at Sarah like a mad bull. How dare you? Do you have a death wish you... Stop! Don't you dare touch her! I went in and pushed him aside and he fell straight to the ground on his butt. You. You'll have to pay for this. I'll make sure. Before he could even finish that sentence, I tossed some coins at him and said, Will that be enough, or do you need more tips? I took Sarah's hand and we both walked out of there. But little did I know that this was the beginning of a never-ending war. The next day, as I walked into the class, I could see Jeff with a wicked smile on his face, and I knew something was off. Just then, Sarah saw me and got off the seat. Hey, Daisy. Suddenly, there was a loud ripping sound across the room. It was Sarah's skirt. Those evil morons put super glue all over her seat. She looked super embarrassed and Jeff and his minions were laughing like crazy. I quickly went in and wrapped my jacket around her skirt and then I walked towards that moron Jeff. You did this, didn't you? Oh, did you see me do it? Wait, you didn't. And it's best that you don't come to me with false accusations like that, you know. I'm a very dangerous man. Just then I stomped on his feet and he yelled in pain. Dangerous? Look at you whining like a puppy. You better remember this and stay away from my friend or I'll... Oh, such a deep friendship. I've got tears in my eyes. But don't you worry. I'll stay away from her because now you're my target and I'll come for you next time. Just you wait and watch. I was about to punch him in the face when the teacher entered and all the kids ran back to their seats. 
Later, while we were walking home, Sarah told me she was worried about me. You know, you shouldn't mess with him. His dad is the richest man in the city. What if he... Oh, he's just a loser who's insecure about himself, so he picks on other kids. And he messed with you today. I can't let him go just like that. He's a jerk who needs to learn his lesson. But you're not. You're better than this. Let it go. I made a mess out of him in the cafeteria and he pulled a prank. Not a big deal. But before she could even finish, a car flashed past us and all the water by the roadside splashed on us. The car stopped a few steps ahead and that jerk Jeff looked back at us out of the window. Oh shoot, I told the driver to ride over you, but he missed. I guess you just earned a few more hours to live. Ah, I was so gonna kill him this time, but Sarah held me back. Why did you do that? Why didn't you let me go? Cause he's crazy, but you're not. You wanna teach him a lesson? Use your mind, not your hands. Well, maybe she was right, but what I saw the next day at school shocked me. Jeff was leaning over at Sarah's desk like a lost puppy. Oh, Sarah, I'm so sorry about yesterday. You see, you're so pretty, and I didn't want to hurt you. But that witch, Daisy, she made me do it out of anger. You forgive me, right? I really want to make it up to you. Would you go out with me tonight? OMG, he was such a jerk. I went ahead and kicked the desk and he fell to the floor. I think I told you to stay away. What are you doing here being all cheesy with her, huh? Daisy, it's okay. He was just saying sorry for what he did. Really, Sarah? You think a jerk like him can, can change? Why don't you ever see the bad in people? Why don't you ever see the good in people? I looked at that jerk and saw his devilish smile and almost felt like killing him, but I was so mad at Sarah now. And then she said something I had never imagined in my worst nightmare. I'm going out with him for a movie tonight and you have to accept that. What? My best friend was siding with some jerk against me after I took her side? She was out of her mind. Fine, do what you want. But just so you know, he's a jerk. He's just playing some game here and I've warned you. But she kept staring at me like I was some crazy person. Ugh, I stormed out of there in anger. The next couple of days, we didn't talk much. And now she would hang out with that moron most of the time. Then one day, while I was sitting in the cafeteria all alone, Jeff came there with Sarah and his arms were wrapped around her. Guys, we have an announcement to make. Sarah and I are officially dating. What the fish? No, that can't be true. Sarah would never. Oh, Daisy, it's true. It took me some time to realize that Jeff is such a nice guy. He's super rich and super smart. And now that I know him, I'm not leaving him ever. Saying that, she hugged him tight and I couldn't believe my eyes. I was so freaking furious. But what about me? What about us? <laughs> oh, honey, there is no us now. And don't act like we broke up or something. It was just friendship, and I can make lots of friends, you know? But guys, how often do you find such a perfect guy in your life, huh? He's not perfect. He's an evil jerk who's playing you to get back at me. Ugh, you're so full of yourself, Daisy. I really love Sarah, and I can smell the burn. You're just jealous of my beautiful girlfriend and her choice of men choice of men? Ew. I almost puked right then and there. I couldn't stand to see that moron even for a second more. I pushed him aside and went away. The next day at school, I was on my way to class when suddenly someone pulled me into one of the empty classrooms. Looking for me, baby? I know I'm irresistible. And the way you were looking at me yesterday? Well, it's not your fault. I'm just so stupid. You're stupid and arrogant. Now let go of me before I... Before I could even finish, he started kissing me. Ugh, oh, get away from me, you loser. I pushed him away and slapped his face. How dare you? I swear, I'm gonna kill you. Whoa, <laughs> easy there, baby girl. The fun has just begun. Remember, I told you I was coming for you. Well, here I am. Your friendship, your pride, and your stupid arrogance. I'm gonna take and crush them one by one. And you'll be able to do nothing, nothing at all but just watch from a distance with tears in your eyes. Saying that, he pushed me aside and left the room. God, now I had blood on my mind. I literally wanted to crush his teeny tiny brain with my bare hands. But first, I was gonna fight. Didn't. I recorded that. Just then, Sarah came forward and slapped him hard in the face. What? What are you? Then she put another slap on his face and continued. The day I saw you pulling her into that empty classroom, I knew something was up. So I recorded it to show it to the principal, but after you blackmailed her, we decided you deserved a grander audience, Jeff. We? Aw, looks like you're a real moron, Jeff. 
Did you actually think that Sarah was on your side? Aw, oh, you poor little thing. She's been my best friend for the last 10 years, and you really thought she'd give up on me for a filthy rat like you? You're not the only one who knows how to act, Jeff. The day you almost crushed us under your car was the day we planned to get back at you. And this ain't the only birthday gift for you. We have your cell phone and all the pictures and messages in it, and everything you have ever done to bully the other kids. You, how did you get that? The same way she got that video up on your private projector. Of course I helped her, you dummy. Remember, I asked you to throw this party? And why do you think I became your girlfriend in the first place? Feeling the burn, Jeff? You witch, I'm gonna kill you. That's enough. Suddenly, his dad came rushing out and said, I can't believe you're my son. You have let me and my reputation down. I'm disowning you and sending you to a boarding school forever. Dad, no, please, dad, no. He kept holding onto his dad's feet and crying like a little baby as he walked back into the crowd. And I couldn't help but say, it was an honor, Jeff. Then I looked at Sarah and she had this awesome smile on her face. Told ya, use your mind, not your hands. You slapped him twice. Oh, <laughs> you got me there. I love you. I love you too. I have a diary in which I write a lot in. It has been with me for five years, including very intimate moments. Basically, by intimate, it includes things like my crushes and relationships, body issues, social media account info, aka my literal passwords, and even things that I would never willingly share like my sexual interests and what I like to look for in a partner. As a child, my parents would only preach privacy to me and my siblings. Looking back at my childhood, I can see that they preached this idea way too much. I guess that's why in my mind, I never would have expected for my privacy to be preached this way. Okay, so in the middle of the night, I ended up waking up and being incredibly thirsty, so I went downstairs to grab a drink, and to my shock, I see my mom, my dad, and both my siblings sitting together on the sofa with my diary in their hands. I was so confused and I couldn't utter a single word. I just went up and snatched my water bottle in my diary and went back to my room and just stayed there. The next day, in private, I grabbed my parents to another room and asked them what the hell I saw yesterday. At first, they tried to play it off as an accident. But what the fuck, I literally saw all four people around my diary. But after more pressure, they admitted that they had been constantly reading my diary with my siblings and their excuse was, we just want to make sure that our child is okay. So I phoned one of my friends who I knew was looking for a roommate and agreed. In the span of the next few days, I secretly removed all my stuff and moved into his house and eventually by the end of the week, I was gone. Once at his house, I just broke down and I just couldn't imagine that all my privacy was breached by the people who would preach respecting privacy to me the most. My parents tried calling, but I ignored them and my siblings keep texting saying that I'm too sensitive and even have insulted me mentioning some of the private stuff that they write in my diary. So I blocked them and also changed all my passwords. Am I the asshole for moving out after realizing that my entire family would constantly read and discuss my diary with each other? Am I the asshole for not thinking the joke my family played on my girlfriend was a big deal? I, 25 male, have a girlfriend, 23 female, who is absolutely beautiful, but she does have a large facial scar. My family often jokes about it. They have a super dark sense of humor. It bothers my girlfriend and she says it doesn't feel like a joke. It feels like she's being insulted under the pretense of it being dark humor. Even though I explain it's just how they are and they don't mean any harm, she doesn't really want to be around them. I told her it was really important to me we spend Christmas with my family. We would all quarantine first and test and it was important to me. She resisted at first, but after some urging from me, she gave in. She said I absolutely could not excuse their behavior if they made a rude comment about her though. We got there and it was fine for a while, then my mom and my sister broke out their matching ugly sweaters that had my girlfriend's face all over it. They both laughed, saying my mom made them screen printed and it was just a joke. My dad thought it was hilarious. I even chuckled a little because she's really beautiful. So it was ironic they put her on an ugly sweater. My girlfriend looked at me and when I said they were just being ironic, she shook her head, got up and left. Didn't say anything to anyone, just took her car and left. The whole time my mom is upset because it was just a joke and she didn't realize my girlfriend was going to overreact like this. I told her that a warning would have been nice, but my sister agreed it was just a joke and my girlfriend was being a baby about it. I had another fight with my girlfriend when I finally got home and she said I was an asshole for putting her in that situation. She said I let them treat her badly and was trying to make it her fault when it was my family who was acting badly. I said it was just a joke and that she was overreacting. She asked how it was supposed to be a joke. I said that was just their sense of humor. I said I was sorry she was offended by the joke, but she ruined the whole day with her reaction. She said that no, them realizing she wasn't going to take their bullshit anymore ruined the day. We aren't speaking currently. I don't really think I've done anything though. I didn't know they were going to do that. And really, it was just a joke and I think she's overreacting. Am I really the asshole here? He's like, it's ironic, she's beautiful. What if she doesn't think she's beautiful, right? 
Story time about how I'm a homewrecker and I don't regret it. I've been dating this guy who's married for a year now. But here's some backstory. We went to high school together and I was so in love with him back then. I never had the courage to tell him that I was in love with him in high school, so nothing ever really happened. I went to college and I didn't see him for a few years. But when I saw him again, he was married with a kid. At the time, I did have a boyfriend, so I never thought anything would happen between us. But the opportunity arose and I took it. One day, I saw him at my gym and I decided right then and there that I wanted to be his girlfriend. I started dressing up really sexy to go to the gym. I'd wear sports bra and really tight leggings and I had no shame. I was doing everything I could to get his attention. But like I said, he was married. I would go up to him at the gym and say hello and he would say hi back. He never really had a full conversation with me and I could tell that it was because he was married. So one day I worked up the courage to ask him for help at the gym. I just pretended not to know how to use a machine and he fell for it. We ended up talking for about 15 minutes and that's when I told him that I had always had a crush on him since high school. He got really nervous and I realized that he was attracted to me. So I asked him for his number really casually. He did hesitate for like a second but then he gave it to me. After that, we would see each other at the gym almost every single day. And of course, I would take the opportunity to talk to him and flirt. And eventually, he started flirting back. Remember I said I had a boyfriend? Well, I told him that I had a boyfriend just to get him jealous. And it actually started to work. He asked me questions about my boyfriend and eventually I told him that he was a loser and I was going to break up with him. The more I flirted, the more it would work. He started asking me about my boyfriend and I could tell that he was getting jealous. So I told him that my boyfriend was a loser and that I was looking for a way out of the relationship. So after that, every conversation we ever had at the gym was about how I was going to break up with my boyfriend you see what i was doing i was getting him so interested in my relationship that all he would think about was me being single one day i mustered up the courage to ask him if he wanted to go get a coffee with me after the gym and he said yes without hesitating we were at the coffee shop for about an hour but he never really talked about anything important i mean he talked about his kids sometimes so of course i started asking about his wife and finally he told me that he wasn't happy in his marriage you see this is what i was looking for and after that i would try to give him advice about his wife eventually i told him that it sounded to me like he needed to get a divorce one day i decided to kiss him after the gym and he did not reject my kiss we made out in his car in the parking lot for two hours he told me he would do anything to be with a girl like me as we were making out in his car finally his wife called him that's when i took his phone and i told him that he needed to give me attention and just like that it worked we started going on dates and everything mostly just to the movie theaters during the day when no one was there so now that i had him i needed the next step was for him to get an actual divorce slowly i started poisoning him against his wife okay i know i sound super evil but this was the only way i was going to be able to do it and i did know that he was unhappy with his wife apparently Apparently, all she really cared about was the kids and not him at all, which I guess is understandable, but you don't neglect your husband after you have children, right? For two months straight, every single day, I would tell him that he needed to get a divorce, and I showed him that he would be so much happier with someone like me. I had him wrapped around my pinky. Eventually, he started agreeing with me. This is when things really started to change. Whenever he'd get into a fight with his wife, he would come stay at my apartment. He had never done this before. A week later, he decided to confess to his wife that he was seeing someone else, which was the happiest day of my life. He asked her for a divorce, and she had no choice but to say yes. She still begs him to stay with her. Now we live together in an even bigger apartment. His wife hates me and calls me a bitch anytime she sees me. But I won. And yeah, we're already talking about getting married. His kids hate me though. What should I do about that? Go for your dreams. Bye. Story time. My boyfriend cheated on me, so I cheated on him with his cousin. So a little background information, I was 18 and a freshman in college. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for three years going on four. And we were pretty much what you call a very toxic relationship. We would break up with each other, then get back together five minutes later. I would say that it's all really my boyfriend's fault. Because instead of spending time with me, he would rather go out to the club and sleep with any whore that he could find. But he would always start an argument with me before he went to the club so that way he had a reason to cheat on me. And he's been doing this ever since we first started dating. I don't know why I didn't take that as a red flag, but I'm a dumb bitch who lacks common sense and is completely blind to red flags. So I started a private Snapchat, but I used it as almost like an OnlyFans. Except it was free. I added a bunch of guys on there and my boyfriend's cousins. His one cousin was my best friend and would low-key hype me up. I made this private Snapchat that was basically like an OnlyFans. And I had his cousin on there who was low-key my best friend. And he would low-key always hype me up on my thirst traps. So eventually I sent him a whole nude picture of myself. His cousin had a girlfriend but neither of us were going to tell our significant others. And I told his cousin that I would sleep with him if he cheats on me again. Well, what do you know, a few nights later he calls me starting an argument before he goes to the club. So I go to bed, I'm bawling my eyes out. And he calls me at 3 in the morning asking for me to get an Uber for him and some friends. But I hear a girl talking in the back. So obviously I gave him a hard time about it. So he hangs up on me, calls me 20 minutes later, and I hear this girl talking in Spanish in the background. Me being me, I assume the worst. I assume that he cheated on me. So he calls me the next day saying that we need to talk. I go over there. He says he doesn't want to be with me anymore. 
So like I said, he calls me over to his house. He says that I'm the problem in the relationship. I'm the reason why he cheats on me 24 seven. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I leave and I go to his cousin's house and his cousin kind of does the deed on me. After that, I leave because I really wasn't trying to do the nasty. So a few weeks later, my boyfriend texts me saying, I need to talk to you, da da da. And we're not together at this point, mind you. And he's like, hey, like, I just feel like you're really not being honest with me. Like, I want to get back together, but I feel like you're unfaithful. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? You literally cheat on me 24 seven. So I give him my phone to go through it. I thought I deleted everything, but I didn't delete a conversation between my best friend and I. So I'm bawling my eyes out, turn on my game face for lying. And I'm like, I swear to God, like I didn't cheat on you. It was a prank. But he did the nasty with that girl, so I think we're even. So obviously I got back with him and we've been together for four years. Am I wrong for telling my dad that I don't want him walking my cousin down the aisle? My 16 female, cousin 23 female, is getting married in November. She's the only daughter of my dad's brother. For some context, we don't get along at all. She bullied me while growing up, and after my uncle passed away, she tried to steal my dad. He never allowed it and made time for both of us, but to this day, my cousin still says that I was a bitch for not letting her have a parental figure, which is not true. Neither my mom or dad allowed her to mistreat me or abuse me, but there's so much a parent can do. She used to do it while they weren't watching too, and I was too afraid to tell them because I could see how important it was for my dad to have a relationship with her, so I kept quiet. While the bullying decreased and never went away, she still makes fun of me because I'm single, because I'm dumb, etc. When she got engaged, she excluded me from the bridal party and it wouldn't matter if it wasn't for the fact that she included the rest of the family. My dad found this suspicious and things got a lot worse with her funny comments that I'll probably attend alone and that she didn't think the bridesmaid dress would be flattering to me because of my size. She took my parents to dinner last week and asked my dad to walk her down the aisle and I don't know what excuse he gave her but after that, he came to my room and asked me if it would be okay for him to do this. I was honest. I said no. I told him that she made most of my life hell even before my uncle passed away and since I was his only daughter I thought it would be an experience between us that I knew she would ask and I only wanted to make my feelings clear but at the end of the day the decision was his and I'll accept whatever he decides because I know how important she is for him he told me that he loved her as a daughter too and that was it well, my dad told her no, and now my cousin is blaming me, telling everyone that I forced him, that I was a jealous little bee, and that if I don't fix it, then I wouldn't be welcome to her wedding. My mom and my aunt sided with her that it was a low blow from my part, and most of her family is saying that it wasn't fair. My mom called me yesterday and told me that I should have lied because this was an important moment for her. My brothers told her that if she didn't stop with the harassment, then they'll drop from the party too, and I can't help but think I caused this big mess. I'm sorry, you said you were 16, she's 23? She's 7 years older than you, and she's like, sounds like she's obsessed with you. She wants to live your life, you know. My friend Dan recently found out that he might be a father. I say might because the girl he's been having an on and off relationship with, Kara, is pregnant and he's not sure if he's the dad. She offered to get a paternity test once the baby is born and doesn't expect any kind of support until they find out if the baby is his. He's on board with that and appreciates that she's not pushing him into fatherhood if the baby isn't his. The issue is that when he was talking to me about it, he also said that he wants to get a maternity test done to make sure the baby is hers. Kara is visibly pregnant. We know she's pregnant because she did a maternity photo shoot and posted it on social media, so it's obvious she's not faking being pregnant. We've both seen her in person too and she's most definitely pregnant. However, Dan believes the baby might not be hers. I try to explain to him that that's not how biology works and unless she's got an embryo implanted in her, then she's definitely the mother. She's a waitress and works for minimum wage plus tips, so I doubt that she has the money to afford an embryo implantation. Plus, it's ridiculous to think that she'd do all of this just to baby trap a guy who is unemployed and living at his parents at 32. He's genuinely convinced that the baby might not be biologically hers, despite not only me, his mom, and our other friends explaining that's not how babies and pregnancy works. He's still insisting on a maternity test and told me that I was being ridiculous and that I'm the one who doesn't understand biology, despite me studying to be an autopsy pathologist, which has required literally years of biology classes. I got fed up and called him a senseless idiot and told him to call me when he has got his head screwed back on straight. Ever since then, he's been spamming my phone and has gotten a couple of friends to spam me as well, telling me I'm being insensitive and he's just stressed out about possibly being a dad. So, am I the asshole for calling my friend an idiot? My mother died last year. I think I'm next. I have two sisters, and one father. My mother was murdered sometime last year. The years leading up to that, she'd been acting more and more strange. She'd have to go to the toilet quite regularly, and, eat much more than usual. She was also all of a sudden fascinated with flowers, and I never got that. I remember her to be quite a mathematical person. The very same year she died, we adopted my second sister. 
I guess that's the way my father coped. We never found our mother's body. I'm not even sure we reported it to the cops to be completely honest. They never called or visited, but maybe they did it when I asleep. Father always forced me to go to bed quite early. I was crushed at the death of my mother. You might say, how do you not remember when she passed away if you were devastated? Truth be told, I don't know the answer to that, that time period is a blur in my head. I remember crying and sobbing, and I also remember the bothered stares I got from my father and sisters. They didn't seem sad at all. Actually, I can't remember a single time they cried or looked hurt at all. That goes not only for my mother, but for the whole time I've known them. Not a single tear. Get over it already. One of them said to me, and I found myself baffled. It's my mother, I wanted to say, but it was also their mother. If they could deal with it without crying then so should I, but I couldn't, I couldn't control the emotions inside of me. The clock struck 7, and I was shuttled into my room. My sisters have their own room that they sleep in. They're roughly the same age, a one year difference. I assume that they go to sleep at the same time I do, but I don't know, father always shuttles me up to my room first. He locked the door, as he does every single time. It had never been an issue for me. I had a lot of privacy and I could do a little bit of anything I wanted to do. There was almost a sense of calm when the door locked. Not tonight. I laid down in my bed, and I quickly fell asleep. I guess my body just got used to sleeping then. I woke up a bit later, my stomach felt like it would burr I don't know how long I was asleep, but I wager that it was not long at all as I wasn't even slightly groggy. I really needed to pee. It felt like my bladder would blow up. In a state of panic, I walked over to the door and rattled that handle. It was closed, as always, and I looked back towards my window. I really didn't want to pee on the floor. The last time I did it, my father beat me to a pulp. My mother died last year. I think I'm next. The open slit opened quite easily, but it felt like forever as each second it felt like my bladder would burst. I could have peed there, but there was flowers just beneath. Tall ones with white blades that whistened during the night. My father loved those flowers like nothing else. I was quite sure that my pee wouldn't destroy the flowers. But there was a small chance of it happening in my head, and that chance terrified me. And, the flowers were beautiful after all. So gorgeous. Climbing down the window proved easier than I thought. I was down, and pissing behind a bush in no time. I made sure to stay out of the window's sight. This was quite embarrassing. It felt relieving, but as I was finishing my business I couldn't help but notice the silence from the first floor. The TV wasn't on, and the lights were off. A curious thought waved into my head. What was my father doing? They, my family, was sitting around our table. They were munching on some red meat that looked dried. Beside the meat, their faces, skin and hair, with the holes for eyes and mouth, and two tiny ones for a nose is laid on the table. I had to grab my mouth or I'd let out a scream. Their heads were large and purple, like purple balloons filled with water shaking back and forward. They had a small mouth at the bottom, where their chin should have been, and they slowly put in the meat there. The flowers shrieked. I jerked, ducking beneath the window, full with andrin I heard the chair sliding backwards, releasing a shriek against the wood floor. In sheer panic, I looked towards the one spot of calmness and safety in my life. I've never climbed as fast as I did. And now I'm sitting in my room typing this up. I'm not sure what I should do. I'm not even sure if this isn't one big nightmare that I'm going to wake up from any second now. I think I need to pee again. Am I the asshole for taking back the beer I bought for a party? On Thursday, a person I had a major crush on in high school, but who rejected me, messaged me out of the blue. She never contacted me without my contacting her first. And at one point I realized she had had me blocked on social media. She said that she was going to have some people over and wanted to know if I would get the beer. 7 o'clock rolled around and she texted me to say she was in front of my house. And she drove me to the liquor store. When we got there, I asked what beer she wanted me to get and she told me to get Budweiser. I got back in the car and said, let's party. And she was eerily quiet. I noticed that she wasn't driving towards her neighborhood, but rather back towards mine. I deadpanned her and asked when she was going to tell me I wasn't invited. She feigned surprise and said that she never intended to invite me in the first place. What she did was the most humiliating it's thing that has ever happened to me. I opened my front door, slammed it a bit too hard, and came back to my room. Now I'm sitting here drinking absolutely unpalatable piss water. Am I the asshole here? Seems I'm always late. Text them reaching out for you Every morning I find drunken messages Spilling the truth on you
This is how I found out my childhood best friend was a ghost. I grew up with a girl named Katie Wells. I lived on a farm and Katie lived with an old woman named Irene in the next house over. Katie and Irene weren't related, but whenever I asked Katie about her, she would just change the subject. It seemed like they never got along because they never talked to each other. Katie seemed really sheltered and I thought it was because Irene wouldn't let her do much. Whenever I would talk about boys or a new celebrity crush I had or even a new popular TV show, she never knew what I was referring to. A while later, my mom ended up quitting her job and working from home, so she didn't take me to Katie's house to have Irene watch me anymore. I remember wanting to go over to see Katie, and I asked my mom a few times, but she always said no. I eventually made new friends, and me and Katie grew apart. A couple years went by, and I started to realize I never saw Katie around anymore. She used to talk about her dad, Pat, a lot, so I assumed she went to live with him. I saw Irene outside one day, and I asked her how Katie was doing and where she'd been. However, she just looked at me like I was crazy. She told me that she had no idea who Katie was and that no one has ever lived with her. I told Irene about how we used to play together at her house, and she gave me a weird look and asked me if I was feeling okay. This is when things got strange. Part 2 of how I found out my childhood best friend was a ghost. The more details I told Irene about Katie, the more she looked at me like I was mental. She assured me it was just me and her in the house when my mom would drop me off. I was shocked. I went home and asked my mom about Katie and she gave me the same confused look Irene just gave me and told me she didn't know what I was talking about. I couldn't believe it. How was I the only one who remembered her? I was starting to think I was going insane. It even crossed my mind that maybe Katie was an imaginary friend that I made up when I was little. However, I vividly remember playing with her every time I went over. I thought about it for days and I couldn't get it out of my head. The mystery kept me up at night and I even dreamt about my old childhood friend. I decided to do some research on Irene's house and my heart sank to my stomach when I realized what happened. I discovered the first person to ever own the house was a man named Patrick Wells back in 1941. I tried to find anything I could on Katie, but nothing came up. I remember Katie talking about her dad, Pat, when I was younger. It finally made sense how she never knew about any recent events I would bring up and why her and Irene would never communicate. I realized that I was the only one who saw Katie because she wasn't alive. I had been playing with the spirit all that time growing up. Story time about how I had to choose between my family and the love of my life. I come from a pretty well-off family. Growing up, I never had to worry about anything because it was always taken care of by my parents. They were pretty religious and we would attend church every week. From a young age, I knew that I was attracted to girls. I also knew that my parents wouldn't accept it, so I buried my feelings deep. Luckily, I was never tempted because I never met anyone that I had feelings for. Fast forward to my senior year of high school. I was on the volleyball team and a new girl named Juliet had transferred to our school and joined the team. We quickly became friends, but there was always a lingering connection between us. I had easily developed a crush on her, but I knew that I couldn't act on it. During spring break, we went to a party and liquid courage led me to confessing my feelings for her. When I told her everything, she kissed me and I felt butterflies fluttering in my stomach. We secretly started dating after this and only my older sister and best friend knew about it. However, the more time I spent with Juliet, the more I knew that she was the one. One night, I finally built up the courage to tell my parents. Unfortunately, the reaction was worse than I expected. They yelled, cried, and told me they'd never accept it. Then they told me they would cut me off and kick me out if I kept seeing her. I was scared and didn't know what to do. Part 2 of how I had to choose between my family and the love of my life. After my parents gave me the ultimatum, I was terrified. The next day after school, I met up with Juliet with the intention of breaking things off. When I told her what happened, she comforted me and told me that it was okay. She said she understood it was an impossible choice and wouldn't blame me for choosing my family. She just wanted me to be happy and do what was best for me. Juliet loved me enough to let me go, even though I knew it was killing her. This was the deciding factor for me. As much as my parents loved me, they didn't accept me for who I am, but Juliet always had. While my parents were at work, we went to my house and packed my things. I called my older sister and she took me in with open arms. I cried to her for a while because I knew that I would never speak to my parents again. A few years later, my sister was getting married and she wanted me to be her maid of honor. Juliet and I were still together and happier than ever. I knew that my family was going to be at the wedding, but I didn't care what they thought anymore. I walked in hand in hand with Juliet and saw my parents' face drop at our entrance. The rest of the family made eyes as well, but we ignored them and enjoyed our night. A year later, I proposed to Juliet and she said yes. Even though I lost my parents, I don't regret my decision. Eventually, we'll make our own family.
story time about how I found out my boyfriend was married. I had just moved to a new state and decided to download Bumble to meet new people. One day, I matched with this great guy named Alex. He had a good job, his own house, never married and no kids. We lived in the same town and we started spending a lot of time together. However, I noticed that Alex started doing some weird things. He started coming over unannounced. Before he left, he would always check to make sure that the doors and windows were locked and when I wasn't with him, he was always blowing up my phone constantly asking what I was doing. A few months into our relationship, he introduced me to his family and I introduced him to mine. It also turned out that we had a ton of mutual friends. He knew my new best friend, Laura, and her husband from the gym. When we made the connection, he made it clear that he didn't want me being friends with her anymore. Anytime I would bring her up in conversation, he would get agitated. Laura and I were both teachers at the same school. One afternoon, she came storming into my classroom. She told me that she had just had a girls' night with the girls from the gym. They were all showing pictures of their wedding since one of the girls recently got engaged. That's when she noticed that my boyfriend was in pictures with another woman. It turns out he was the husband of one of the girls that she was having dinner with. Part 2 of how I found out my boyfriend was married. When my best friend showed me the pictures of my boyfriend and his wife, I was livid. I saw Red and immediately texted him telling him to come over to my house to talk. He ended up calling me on the way home from work but refused to come over to my house until I told him what I wanted to talk about. When I told him, he automatically started blaming my best friend and her husband for telling his business, saying it wasn't theirs to tell. I felt so angry and betrayed but most of all, I felt stupid for not knowing. I told him it was over and that I was done with him. I didn't hear from him again after that. He moved away and no one at the gym had seen him either. A few months after everything happened, his wife posted on Facebook saying that she was getting a divorce. It turns out that he had beaten her up so badly that she ended up in the hospital. This abuse had apparently been going on for months. I felt that it was a blessing in disguise that I had gotten out of that relationship. Seeing how controlling he was within just a few months of dating, who knows what would have happened if I didn't find out and kept dating him. Luckily, I haven't seen or heard of him since 2018 and I hope that I never do. Story time about how I had to get a restraining order against my creepy neighbor. I found a good deal on a rental and moved into a new neighborhood. It seemed like a decent area and I was excited for a fresh start. My friend was helping me move my stuff into my new house when my neighbor noticed and came over to welcome me. He seemed nice and he even offered to help us unload the heavy furniture, which I accepted. A couple nights later, someone rang my doorbell and it was him. He brought me a plate of cookies and welcomed me to the neighborhood again. I thought he was just friendly and trying to be nice, but he kept doing things for me. Whenever he mowed his lawn, he would come over and mow mine as well without asking. I told him he didn't have to do that, but he insisted and said it wasn't any trouble. He brought me over food every few nights and always said he made extra and wanted to share. I wanted him to stop, so I told him that I was going on a strict diet and politely declined the next time he tried it. At this point, I could tell he was being overly friendly and it started getting weird. One morning, I came outside and he was washing my car. I asked him what he was doing and he replied that he just finished washing his and figured he'd do mine as well. I told him I appreciate it, but I didn't want my car washed and he shouldn't have done it without my permission. Unfortunately, things kept getting weirder from here. Part 2 of why I had to get a restraining order against my creepy neighbor. My new neighbor kept doing unwanted favors for me. Whenever I asked him to stop, he would just ignore me and do it anyway. It got creepy when I got a package in the mail that I didn't order. It was a new keyboard that I was talking about getting myself for Christmas in my live stream on Twitch a few nights prior. No one on my Twitch stream had my address. Upon further inspection, there was a note inside the box that said, here's that new keyboard you were talking about, from your neighbor Jim. I never told Jim about my Twitch account, and I had no clue he watched it, which led me to believe he'd been looking me up online. I was super creeped out at this point and was going to tell him to leave me alone for good the next time I saw him. The last straw was when I came home from work and this man was hanging up Christmas lights on my house for the holidays. I was shocked. I got out of the car and immediately went off on him. I threatened to call the police and get a restraining order on him if he didn't leave me alone. Apparently, he didn't get the message because he sent me flowers with an apology card the next day and tried to contact me on three social media platforms. Platforms. I contacted the police when he wouldn't stop and filed for a civil harassment restraining order. After this, Jim stopped, but I still ended up moving a couple months later to get away from him.
This is why you need a security system for your house. A few years ago, I was renting a house in Northern California. The neighborhood was just outside of the suburbs. It seemed like the perfect balance of having space and having nice neighbors close enough not to feel isolated. The area had no street lights, so it was very dark at night, but it didn't bother me. I got home from work one evening in midwinter. It was a cloudy night, so pulling up, I only saw what my headlights and porch light illuminated. When I got out of my car, I caught a whiff of cigarette smoke. That was odd as I had never smelled that before around my house, but I didn't see anyone nearby, so I ignored it and went inside. I had just gotten off a shift with a few hours of overtime and I was exhausted. It wasn't even 7 yet, but I decided to call it an early night. I woke up sometime later when I heard a noise inside of my house. I wasn't immediately worried because my best friend had a spare key and would sometimes come over. However, he'd always text me and let me know, but when I checked my phone, there were no messages. I called out my friend's name. There were a few seconds of silence before I heard someone stomping as they ran through the bottom floor. I leapt out of bed and ran to the closet. They were already up the stairs by the time I opened the door and stepped inside. I was terrified. That's when I heard them thunder down my hallway. Part 2 Why You Need a Security System for Your House The house had two bedrooms on either hallway and a bathroom. The bedroom doors were closed, but the bathroom door was creaked open. I was so lucky in that moment because he sprinted to the bathroom. That gave me just enough time to open the attic access in my closet and pull myself up. As I lifted myself, I heard the person run towards my room. I had just pulled my feet inside when my bedroom door burst open. He walked in and stopped. When he didn't see me, he went and checked the other room, then came back and turned on the light. A moment later, he ripped open my closet door. After a few seconds, he stepped away and I heard a loud crash come from my room, followed by a scream of frustration and anger. Then he went downstairs. I had left my phone when I ran for the closet and wasn't sure I could climb down without him hearing. After some time, the noises stopped. I counted to a thousand then climbed down to call the police. My bed had been flipped, furniture knocked over, and all my things destroyed. The only thing missing was a knife from my kitchen. The police found that the side door had been forced open by a crowbar. They also found cigarette butts and an empty tube used for drugs. They think he had been watching the house for a while. I installed some security on the house after this. I can't imagine what would have happened if he had come to my room first. Story time about how my roommate tried to steal my boyfriend. When I was 18, my parents told me that I had to move out. I found a really nice apartment that was pretty spacious, but I definitely couldn't make rent on my own. I put out an ad for a roommate and found a girl named Jenny who seemed really put together. When Jenny moved in, everything was fine. We got along well, but didn't overstep any boundaries. When the pandemic hit, my boyfriend started staying over more. Jenny didn't have a problem with this as we had plenty of room and didn't bother her. Over time, I started noticing little things Jenny would say and do. Whenever my boyfriend came over, she made it a point to wear as little clothing as possible, but when he wasn't there, she would be in full-on PJs. My boyfriend and I had date nights a couple times a week at home. She would invite herself to our date nights and solely focus on talking to my boyfriend the whole time, laughing a little too hard at his jokes. I'm not easily intimidated, so I didn't read much into it and didn't think that she'd ever actually try anything. One weekend when I was sleeping in, my boyfriend woke me up. He had gone for a jog and was making his post-workout smoothie in the kitchen, and that's when Jenny approached him. Apparently, she told him that he should stay and hang out with her when I went to work instead of leaving when I leave like he usually does. She only got more flirty with him from here. Part 2 of how my roommate tried to steal my boyfriend. My roommate Jenny continued passively flirting with him. One morning, she came into the kitchen wearing one of his t-shirts that we put in the wash the previous night. When I asked her about it, she said she didn't know that it was his and she found it in her laundry basket. She changed him through the shirt at him with a smile. A few nights later, she sent him a picture on Instagram in her bra and immediately apologized saying she sent it to him on accident. He quickly sent me the screenshots of the messages. The final straw was when she tried to make a move on my boyfriend one night when I was running late from work. He was waiting for me in my room when she barged in intoxicated. She tried to straddle him and kiss him, but he quickly pushed her off. When I got home and confronted her, she flipped out and started cursing me out. She locked herself in her bedroom the rest of the night and wouldn't come out to talk to me. The next morning, I told her that she needed to move out. The following month, she did, but that didn't stop her from taking a final shot at my boyfriend. She messaged him on Instagram and asked him to come over to her new place. She said she would keep it a secret and would do anything he wanted. Obviously, he showed me and I posted the screenshots of her thirsty ass and tagged her. She got flooded with messages about being a homewrecker and she deleted her social media accounts. Luckily, I haven't heard from her since.